yesterday night <clears throat> there was a passage i think or a few lines from savitri a seed shall be sown in death's tremendous hour a branch of heaven transplant to human soil and mortality nature shall overleap a mortal step so this line about branch of heaven transplant to human soil reminded me of a story which has a direct bearing with the subject today i believe it is aspiration so the story goes it's a story of krishna and the story goes that during one of his exploits he along with satyabhama one of his consorts they go to battle the demon from the infernal hell narakasur that's where the 16000 queens come and he defeats the demon to cut a long story short and all these energies or the um, those he had held captive are released from the subconscious and they are wedded to krishna so beauty this part is the simpler part beautiful story that well all the energies which are locked in our subconscious parts they need to be wedded to the divine that's how this earth nature can undergo the needed transformation but then the second part of the story refers to this branch of heaven where as they are returning back satyabhama sees a tree which is blooming in indra's heaven and she says i want this branch of this tree i want to plant it upon earth so krishna can enter anywhere he is the eternal trickster so he enters stealth of god compelling the heart to bless he picks up a branch and they start back and as they start back indra and the god says no 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 this cannot be how can you do that <laughs> you are disturbing the balance of creation but krishna is krishna what he has decided he has decided and there is a little bit of a battle and obviously indra and the others are no match to krishna and he says i am taking this branch to transplant to heaven and to earth and indra curses he says okay you can take this but it will not bear any fruits so krishna smiles and says doesn't matter about the fruits i need the flowers and he brings the branch but the story doesn't end there and as he brings it rukmani the consort of krishna she says this is unfair that you know that tree will only be with satyabhama such a beautiful tree i also want it so krishna finds a way he says i'll transplant the tree in the soil where satyabhama lives but as the tree grows the flowers will be for rukmini because the tree is growing and crossing over the compound the story of course sounds like any of those mystical stories as we know they are very profound so this tree the the transplanted branch of heaven is the tree called parijat whose name mother has given as aspiration it's the aspiration tree why indra doesn't want it there is a similar story in greek mythology prometheus and he is punished by shiva but there the story is about fire being given to man but why it is not allowed he doesn't want because this aspiration tree has the capacity to make mortal human beings grow into the immortal gods so that's the the fallen portion of our divinity can reclaim its lost portion it it will no more be under the right now you know that prayer and to gods i'm talking of the gods who are the cosmic managers so it can go beyond this is something which um, uh, they don't want so but krishna brings and transplants it now the story symbol is so beautiful when we know this truth aspiration flowers bloom at night they fill the night with beautiful fragrance 
and if you see them they they actually fall at night so when they fall at night uh, they have this uh, base which is like uh, those white flowers and they have this orange uh, stalk which is pointing upward just like a flame so it it's a very beautiful sight wherever you see these aspiration tree with the aspiration flowers the only at night you will find this so satyabhama is bhudevi she is the a uh, goddess who is the incarnation of mother earth so in her boundary this flower this branch has been planted but to bear their full fruits or for to arrive at their full blossom this earth nature must arrive at some semblance of divine nature heavenly nature because rukmani is the lakshmi she is the goddess lakshmi she is the divine consort of vishnu so in this story is so beautifully uh, the greek story is um, uh, puts the fire the basic sense of the legend is same but it is a bit gory that zeus curses that you know during day you will be filled as a person and night all your entrails will be eaten away it's a bit gory story that means the same thing <laughs> is the fire so is this, this aspiration which krishna brings and plants to earthly soil it is what can make rec- reclaim our lost heavenly nature see this this sense of humanity being a fall comes in several scriptures though it is very much misunderstood that we have fallen from some state which is divine and because it is there we all the time are wanting in some way or the other and why has mother nature bound us to earth because she wants that you have come from there created here and we don't know how we have lines in savitri which point toward that this is what is meant even by the virgin birth heavens joy could be ours if earth were pure enough you also see in the story of buddha another story of virgin birth or born out of yagya many such stories which speak about this earth nature which originally in its origin it comes from the divine that's why shubhendra speaks of the seven immortal earths in its origin but how it suffers a fall and it must reclaim its lost portion of divinity that's why we have so many symbols and i have stories i'm resisting my temptation where you know uh, uh, one has to ascend and climb and uh, reclaim those uh, portions so this power in us which labors to lift us back to the nature of the gods and go beyond is aspiration so from now onwards we should not use this word orphan anath this doesn't exist in, in you see nobody is anath nobody is an orphan why because there is in each one of us the divine parentage we all have it we don't know so therefore we feel so there is again you know we have stories of shakuntala of she is born apparently like an orphan she is orphan but look at she becomes the great empress so if this aspiration is there in us it is the leader the fire that leads the human march and if this can be lit up and increased then there is no obstacle that can stand before it it is what we find in 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 myths and legends one of them at the level of the world there is an aspiration in the entire world also which is um, takes the form of kartike in indian thought kartike is the um, deva senapati the leader of the gods even the gods are behind he is the leader and he um, goes on the victory bird which is peacock and kartike leads and he battles and he wins and he conquers this is the power of this aspiration and where when does it ignite an aspiration in the nights profound so you see night at night perhaps that's why nights come perhaps that's why in our individual life we have to go through these passages of night because otherwise our state is heaven's call is rare rare at the heart that heeds so we have to go through these passages and during these passages 
Straight away this story gives us this hint. When we are going through a difficult passage, when the world, everything seems impossible, what should we do? Nobody is around us. We are apparently alone. Light up this flame of aspiration. Let it mount so high that it dissolves all obstacles. The mother speaks about it. It has the power to dissolve all obstacles. Fire. And this fire has two aspects in it. It gives light and it gives heat. It is a fire that contains at once the divine energy, the divine power and the divine wisdom. So it works at both levels. Its original home is the divine. That's why it is transplanted from heaven. This fire in the Vedas has three places where we find it. One is in its original home, the super mind, where this fire in its original blaze is there. Second is in matter. From where it rises up as the Kundalini Shakti, it's concealed. And third is in the center of the heart, in the heart cave, where it burns unseen. Savitri is full of humor. At one place he says, God's last refuge from thought's profaning touch. It is hidden deep inside the heart, this fire. This is the same nature as the divine energy, the divine power. But for the sake of evolution, the divine himself, the divine mother herself has become this. So that the link can be made from both sides. She is the one who will give the boon, but she is the one who will ignite the fire, becomes the fire. She is the fire that burns in the depths of the heart. But before it burns, there is a long journey it has undergone. It starts right in the depths of the darkness, in the abyss. But it is covered up with entire darkness. That's in, if you take the Dash Mahavidya of the Upanishad, we'll see a name of the Divine Mother Goddess who is found in the highest realm as Tripur Sundari, the beauty with whose effulgence all the worlds are radiant with that effulgence. But there she is Dhumavati, the dark mother. She is covered, but still she is there. See, this thought that this aspiration is everywhere, but we are not aware of it. So it is there in the abyss. In the abyss, it takes a very strange form of suffering. See, all suffering at its root is the suffering of separation from our origin. We think that uh, it my suffering will be eased or appeased if I get this. But thank God that man is the most dissatisfied creature because uh, he cannot rest in any halfway home of the spirit. So this in abyss, Shobhita speaks about this suffering whose shadow is there in the inconscient. Though it doesn't experience like that. And it takes the form of hunger. Hunger that is death. But this same thing can be transmitted and one could say, I am hungry for the infinite. Someone asked the mother that I feel this hunger for God. Is it fine? He says, yes, if it is for the infinite, this hunger is good. This hunger, there is another line where the spirit's hunger you must nurse. So this, but actually in ignorance it takes other forms, which is hunger for this, hunger for that, hunger for all kinds of things, believing that hunger can never be appeased. But our hunger is for the infinite and it cannot uh, be appeased. Temporarily it can be probably, which is not really good. So when God loves us, he makes sure that the hunger is nursed. So I suppose that's the deeper sense, though said very unconsciously, stay hungry, stay foolish. Uh, I mean, <laughs> maybe very <laughs> unwittingly, <laughs> <laughs> so this hunger which is there in the abyss then as it rises takes the form of this suffering takes the form of yearning longing and yearning so we long and then we yearn still there is a bit of longing and yearning still have a kind of restlessness inside it so the vital catches it and turns it into desires and then as it ascends further, it becomes aspiration. Now there is something solid, something which is uh, steadfast, but without any uh, restlessness in it. It burns. Why there is no restlessness? Very simple. When we look at, you know, Mira's bhajans, many mystics experiences. 
so we'll see that in the beginning when the vital catches this fire it brings it a kind of restlessness jo me aiso janati preet ki ye dukh hoye nagar dhindora pitti preet na ki jo koi if i knew that love is going to bring so much of suffering i would have gone around the world saying don't love that's what she say she is in full of that vira when the vital catches this aspiration it turns it into vira but why vira is not the way and vyakulta is not the way in aspiration why because it implies a lack of faith but true aspiration is full of faith it knows that he or she whom i seek will come whenever she decides so this aspiration is never an impatient thing that's what should be the caution says that don't don't the moment it becomes impatient it mixes with the vital so it see it is in the soul in the depths of the heart the vital is right there in front and the moment it mixes it brings all kinds of restlessness storms turbulences and then it can bring in all kinds of forces even forces that mimic the spiritual um, consciousness states beings and it can do all that so this aspiration must be quiet and steady like a flame burning towards the heavens it's ready to give itself completely burn itself completely endlessly it has full of faith so this is when aspiration is born then true spiritual life begins before there is before that there is religion and uh, there are also secular approaches to the divine and uh, before that there is the ordinary life of desires with morality to bring some clips over it so shivanda distinguishes these three levels of life the ordinary life which is a life of the ordinary round usual round of desires centered largely around what food shall i have as my next meal and uh, things such like and then but because uh, human nature something in us understand that this is not uh, how we can live so there is the mor- morality which comes to put a hedge around it eat your plate from your plate but don't eat from another's plate don't steal ethics goes one step further eat from your plate don't look at another person's plate so you know because its basis is truth and good and beauty so in a secular consciousness or a or a being who approaches divine this way so aspiration is this beauty unlike prayer which needs a being we we don't pray just we pray to someone so that line is so thin so prayer is to a being addressed to a being invariably so it takes the religious form whereas aspiration need not be towards a being it carries the seed of its own fulfillment within itself so one aspires for instance one says i i aspire that this world be a world of truth and beauty and good and light this is an aspiration if you ask whom are you addressing it well i aspire for it i don't know whether even there is a god who will answer it but this is my aspiration so it takes this form and in the beginning this is the form that it takes in human consciousness it takes the form of truth beauty and good satyam shivam sundaram this is the form and it automatically tries to go towards that wherever there is truth wherever there is beauty it has its own conception it it evolves initially it thinks truth is legal truth but as one develops one realizes that truth is far too deep than what our appearance is so that's why when it is said satyam eva jayate nanritam it's the aspiration of the soul but this satyam is not just the outer truth which we reckon so that is how it grows beauty wherever it sees beauty beauty of thought beauty of gesture beauty of feelings this is moved by that gesture even beauty of form so this deep within there is something which is drawn towards that but not the way the senses are drawn not the way that the mind is drawn 
so it can take this form but when it develops still further and that's why as it grows it has this need for a like what is called as the sangha that's why we see even in buddhism we have uh, buddham sharanam gachami sangham sharanam gachami dhammam sharanam gachami so dharma is the law of the truth the right and sangam is the collectivity this fire seeks wherever there is fire it goes and therefore it uh, seeks the god lovers the god seekers very naturally and when it connects with someone like that it is at a very deep level very strangely and that's the example yesterday also i gave that well we all connect at a very deep level it's beyond our like it's nothing to do with the uh, form the name uh, i mean i don't know uh, uh, probably i won't know uh, many people's name many of you may not know my background it's really unnecessary <laughs> it in fact is a problem very often <laughs> it's so beautiful to connect this way that well we are one in aspiration sanga chatvam sangvadattam but the moment okay uh, i thought you are a, you know i don't want to you know help come this oh you you don't speak hindi i thought you are hindi and this gone <laughs> that's where the problem become <laughs> because a barrier has come look how the barrier comes you don't bring this barrier aspiration is so beautifully connected it doesn't matter what language you speak <laughs> where you come from what's your job whether you are see you or you are just a little peon it doesn't matter it automatically it catches that little spark inside it sees and wants to join with that it has even there are souls reaching out to souls you have been to use this word of course uh, i must say as an aside be careful of the term soul mate find the soul the mate will find you <laughs> don't <laughs> start looking for soul mates without the soul <laughs> <laughs> but but then such things happened when nalnida shobindo gave him i mean this uh, he told him that you nalni you go get look at the obedience of the disciple <laughs> so this is before 1926 okay he used to go every year to kolkata and one day shobindo tells him nalni go get married and come back so nalni goes gets married and comes back Just imagine what an obedience! <laughs> and this happens. He had children, four children, and he would go and he would come back. Then once again he wanted to go. Uh, he went to the mother and uh, did pranam. I am going. Mother said one last time. <laughs> That's it. So people asked him, "How did you know? You just went there. You got married." He said, "Well, I saw and I knew this is the person with whom." Have to get married. Just imagine. We know her name in the Lika Diyu was Moon Goddess, represented. Later on, came to the ashram. Had such lovely, you know, all the children who um, really, you know, lived on there. One of them was editing Advent. So this aspiration is something which doesn't. It can see behind appearance, behind the walls of appearances. It is this power. and therefore it naturally seeks those who are god lovers nothing wrong sangham shobindo speaks of it that's why ashram that's why auroville that's why society that's why these congregations a mighty collective aspiration can change the course of things but because it is so special and precious in fact birth of aspiration means initiation people often ask that you know how do i know that i have been initiated into this yoga if you have the aspiration you are initiated it doesn't mean others are rejected heavens that's what is meant uh, by the biblical saying many are called few are chosen the call goes to many but most don't translate it into this conscious aspiration it remains in that you know religious ground okay god give me this give me that art and artharthi doesn't translate into conscious aspiration those in whom it translates into conscious aspiration are chosen the seal has been put doesn't matter how long it is going to take that's why it is so precious the other than faith 
and faith is inbuilt within it because it has both aspects it is the most precious treasure that a human being ever has and therefore there comes the other side all the forces in the world want to throttle it stifle it destroy it so we see in the story of krishna who represents the imminent divine and the journey of the soul born in the prison of the ego and then you know as he is growing and they take all kinds of ways putna she she says i am going to give the original milk but actually it's not original milk it's laced with poison and this way she wants to kill trinavrat the storm the tornado all kinds of inner storms tornadoes and these forces they shubhendu describes this in in descent into night that she prowls around every tent where this light is growing so that it can attack and destroy it and what saves because during the course of journey especially when the aspiration is small these things happen and it can be so dangerous even mother speaks about mark missing in the register of the souls so what should one do at that point of time when these passages come we start doing just the reverse we start doubting that's their purpose the moment we start doubting these forces say got it here is this fellow now we will tie him with a rope and drag him because we have caught him so despair doubt guilt unfitness oh maybe i am god has abandoned me I often tell when people develop this idea that God has abandoned me. I said you won't live to say anything. If God leaves, nothing will exist. This creation will collapse. You know that story of Rama, where everybody is throwing the stone with Rama's name, and it is floating. And when Ram says, "What is this that with my name these stones are floating?" So he also at night quietly writes Ram and puts it in the water. But nothing happens. It drowns. So Hanuman is watching. Hanuman says lord this is very logical if you leave somebody from your hands it is going to drown but your name can make the person cross the bhav sagar so that's why we have these lines in savitri when these attacks come a prayer upon his lips and the great name for winding through hell runs turns the heavenward path and none can reach heaven who has passed not through hell so one must pause casting a javelin regard in front so these forces attack that is what is happening today in oroville <laughs> they attacked at the beginning why because they knew that oh my god this is going to threaten our plan of pralaya <laughs> so <laughs> the same forces now have taken a different form <laughs> they have switched sides this that whatever it is anyways that's a different story altogether what can save collective aspiration the mother speaks about it toward the later part unity 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 is one thing needed unity cannot be created by the mind this is a lesson we need to understand the mind divides look at all the the way that debates and discussions will bring a common ground of meeting the debates and discussions can lead us only to this point that let's agree to disagree highest no is it not true but where is the seed of unity in the heart in love and which love is going to unite not i love you and my love for you but the love that is as vast as the universe divine love when we are centered in the divine when we love the divine and love everything because of the divine when we live for the divine unity will just come yesterday uh, hasmuk bhai used a word i think you had used the word collective harmony and i was smiling <laughs> because of a statement of the mother she said collective harmony is something which only the divine can realize <laughs> human beings don't have the key when nalini da asked what is the secret of harmony shubhin da gave a one line answer union in the mother as simple as that join in her 
harmony is unity and with harmony unity everything will blossom but the forces don't want that so they attack collective aspiration individual aspiration so one must guard it one must strengthen it fortify it especially in the beginning there is a very beautiful image that one of the saints gave that you know when the fire is very small like a flame then if uh, if a storm comes it is extinguished but when the flame has grown into a fire and the storm comes it blazes so when the aspiration is small it needs to be sheltered that's why there are many do's and don'ts prescriptions and prescriptions in spiritual life people don't understand because this idea of you know freedom liberal and whatever i want to do it's my choice my wish there is a state in which one can somebody like swami vivekananda of whom shri ramakrishna somebody complained to shri ramakrishna prophetically he said that time there was no way he was going abroad and prophetically he said oh even if he travels across the seas and sits with uh, you know um, x y z and has <laughs> wine <laughs> and eats meat nothing will happen to him because he'll purify it now that applies to that stature but ordinarily that's why in many of these individual and collective gatherings care is taken to guard this aspiration don't drink don't smoke don't lead a licentious life is basically for this because otherwise these storms of passion ambitions they will just finish it and that's why the need to come together because we strengthen each other's aspiration that's why i was saying this is a yagya this is not a conference conference is a very intellectual world looks like we all come we give our view points <laughs> it's a fire in which we grow together this is how the ancient rishis conducted the fire great fire sacrifice vladimir will know the mantra better sangha chatam sangha one of my favorite ones may we come together may we speak with one voice what is that one voice it, it's not uh, language or mental voice one voice the voice of the soul and the mother says a collective aspiration can change the circumstances events all this so i would even suggest that you know at the end probably i'm sure it will be there that we all come join together and aspire for this land for this world for for the divine will to manifest whatever is true whatever is beautiful may that happen without bringing our own mental conceptions into it so that's why this has to be nurtured in the beginning and how is it nurtured so one way is of course we know that food has to be fed this fire fire grows through offering so in typical ancient ritualistic fire worship what was offered what was offered was gritam what is this ghee this <laughs> clarified butter uh, it is the intellect the shining intellect it is offered and when we offer this intellect instead of oh i know it all my mind and you know there is nothing greater than me instead of that we make an offering of our thoughts to the divine what is meant by offering our thoughts to the divine very simply to think of the divine very very simply one how do i offer my thoughts to the divine by thinking of the divine by letting my thoughts turn to the divine how to do, make it happen very simply read something which is like a voice of the divine swadhyaya this used to be one of the things inbuilt within i think every uh, civilization uh, in a indian home it was a way of life uh, early morning 3:30 my father would every day do ramayana and it was very exciting and uh, we would get up and sit just i used to enjoy that uh, puja so oh i want to dress the deity and it, it was a kind of you know this um, this kind of a, it's not just a ritual but your thoughts when you are dwelling with in this the purpose of these scriptures when we are with the book that's why very often people say think positive there are so many videos on this that so people ask but how do i think positive i said yes they're quite true so <laughs> what is the remedy I, I read Swami Vivekananda. Read Shri Aurobindo. Read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Read the Gita. 
you will think positive why because now our thoughts are turning towards the ultimate positive rather than all these techniques and trickeries that you know so but you know then it sounds very religious so thank god i am not uh, charging money as a psychiatrist but if i were charging people will stop coming saying that he is a religious man when we go for psychological help he turns at to the geeta okay it happened and somebody asked me once which is the best book to read for psychology when i was teaching psychology to students as a psychiatrist we had to take psychology classes also so i said in syllabus or out of syllabus so in syllabus there is freud young young all those things so i said well if you ask me read the mahabharata sir but <laughs> i said i know it is out of syllabus so what i'll do is i'll talk to you about mahabharata in the classes which are dedicated to messrs freud and company so i said it's okay fine <laughs> so when we read these things we are in the company of that fire and when we read sharbindo's works they are actually fire nothing else it it touches us and i'll share one experience um, just because it it's something so concrete and once all this debate was going on this almost 30 years back that whether i should speak on sharbindo or not because people were asking and i was very hesitant that uh, should one or should one not then one day i just uh, many experiences happened around that time uh, but one of them which is so distinctly i remember that i was reading one of the books of sherbindo and the words are there and suddenly i don't know what zone i zoned out <laughs> that's the modern word <laughs> i zoned out and i saw these words where like uh, suddenly became wavy so they were like uh, um, stone like waves very strange i don't know and then they started melting in fire literally fire emerging from all these words and then i got the secret i said okay they are not words they are fire the living fire when we read sharbindo and the mother it's like when we take a capsule of uh, what happens people patients remember capsule by the color they come and tell me sir give me that yellow capsule <laughs> I, i don't know <laughs> So recently even i had a problem i went for some medicine and they gave me i said i sure i i didn't read the formula i said i know this used to come in yellow that pink color said sir you are speaking now like the patient so i said okay okay i am just avoiding the labor of reading the content so but we know that uh, color doesn't matter okay <laughs> so the content matters <laughs> okay so what matters is the content and uh, whether you take this color that color the content is going to uh, the the capsule will go away and it will start creating its work so yesterday also we spoke about this work of transformation so when we read sharbindo this fire is lit mother's prayers and meditation i don't know why this book is so little discussed it's one book which is not just fire it is um, jwalamukhi <laughs> i don't know volcano and i haven't read a book with such wonderful i mean there is no book uh, which contains all about bhakti so much as this one all the up till now known bhakti sutras they fade into insignificance when you read this mother's prayers and meditation one is bound to get you know uh, ignited up she ignites she said also when somebody asked the mother that what is it that you have put in your word there is a long five six line um, you know question the answer is only one word so i'll the question is what is it that when i read your work this happens that happens this happens that happens etc etc what is it that you put into them and the mother's one word answer is consciousness consciousness they may sound very simple but they contain consciousness reading them literally literally ignites the fire at least i remember once when when i got hold of shirbind and the mother's works i had to read them all the time sitting in the bathroom standing for uh, a queue waiting somewhere and wherever it was it was like uh, madness and i was experiencing this kind of fire all the time burning inside something similar to when i had once read swami vivekananda suddenly i started feeling this fire here so these are not words they are only k- 
capsules and every day swadhyaya and the next is satsang where people come together not to chit chat but to simply sit together and join in that aspiration so these are the ways that this fire has to be nurtured and nourished it's precious is something should never be lost whatever else may be lost it comes with great difficulty it's a branch of heaven which the divine has planted upon earth and this aspiration is not the end of things it grows and evolves because its seat is in the soul so it evolves it's very interesting in the beginning it may take the form of you know okay let me give this analogy that somebody is going to meet Uh, the master and you know as he comes in the beginning he sees nice little flowers and he says i wish i could have some of these flowers and as one goes uh, inside there is a lovely sharbat that is given to you so one takes that sharbat and somras and you have such qualities and you say oh i wish i could take a bottle to my house and share it with others but the master has not yet come and standing before the gate and all kinds of aspiration <laughs> growing up and uh, you feel like saying probably maybe you know do you have a vacancy at your place can i do job for you and then the door opens and then what do you do you just say take me completely i am yours you know that story of singapore um, president who came to mother and he was looking around and he was thinking what shall i tell when i see the mother he said oh i'll tell her uh, great lady you have done a good job <laughs> so he went <laughs> when he went <laughs> he was lost <laughs> he was reborn he was in a lab didn't realize how he reached there so aspiration it may start with anything initially it may start it may even take a very uh, external form i have this aspiration to go to pondicherry technically it won't be aspiration but it is true that deep inside something is aspiring it has taken this form material form i want to go to pondicherry i cannot go well nature this one day pondicherry will come to you that also happens ultimately divine comes to you so then it may take another form you know you want to connect with god in some way like yesterday we had this as i want to see god so it can take different forms i want to come in contact with god i want to still further i want to have uh, experience of what the divine contact is though shobin the cautions that you know this is, wanting to have experiences is a very vital thing and a very dangerous thing experiences have their meaning when they arise spontaneously beside they do not transform the consciousness they only bring a stamp of course there are major realizations that's a different story but experiences like visions and voices etc so one wants to come in contact with god and then as one grows one may say well i just want to be your servant and slave to love you endlessly there is a beautiful aspiration of the mother i mean she has aspired for all of us i want to know thee to know thee so that i can serve thee and love thee better there is a beautiful story about champaklal ji we all know how he served the mother and shurbindo in unique distinction of serving both the avatars and then after many years i think it was 20 years if i am not mistaken or definitely beyond 10 years he tells mother mother i want to ask you something yes what is it my child up till now i have served you the way i wanted to serve you now i want to serve you the way you want me to serve you isn't it a lot of problems come up even in spiritual organization because everybody believes he is right he is serving the divine cause whatever that cause is and people quote see this what she has written therefore this this what she has written if only we could take a stance i want to serve you the way you want me to serve you i want to know your will not my will just imagine how life would change that is the beauty of hanuman his life teaches us that how to serve the divine the way the divine wants us to serve he never exceeds his brief is perfectly obedient goes does his job and comes back 
So this service of the divine, it can take that form. Love for the divine, knowing the divine so that I can love him more completely. And then comes the ultimate. In various ways we relate with the divine. Service means he is my master and lord. Relate with the divine in various ways. He is my friend, he is my father, tameva mata, chapita tameva, my mother, my confidant. All these are ways through which the aspiration grows and evolves, trying to come in contact with the divine. So, and finally it takes this form. Of course, I must say the most primitive form of this is uh, afraid of the divine. <laughs> so, but anyways, as it grows, it begins to become more pally in contact with the divine. Afraid in, means very far. When you're far, you don't know you're awesome. It's like divine is something to be afraid of. But as you come near, you become um, habituated. Like people first time when they go to the ashram, they are all like a bit... Uh, Stifled, who knows what somebody else will say. Suddenly you say, don't sit like this, don't. But after some time, <laughs> you say, I know where I have to go, what I have to do, because you become friendly. So then, and slowly, ultimately, this aspiration may take the form that I want to become one with the divine. This is the height to which human aspiration can go. Why? Because we are in our essence divine. How to become one with the divine? By giving ourselves completely for nothing else but for the joy of union, for the ecstasy of union. And that is the highest aspiration that human beings have ever. And this way we return back to that mighty core and base and circumference of a life. But then yes, that's where Shurabindu brings a new aspiration to earth. Up till this, we see that there has been aspiration. There have been yogis who said, I want just completely to merge into you. Mira says, you know, we start that the, in the beginning. Later on, she says, Mere to girdar gopal dusra na koi. Shyam mane chakar rakho ji. Make me your servant, your slave. I want to merge in you. There is none else for my life but you. Giving oneself completely to you. But here comes the new aspiration, like Krishna planted one aspiration, Shubhinda has planted a still greater aspiration for earth. I want to become one with you, not to vanish into you, but so that your work, your will may be done here upon earth, in matter, upon earth. So often I take this analogy and the first aspiration when to merge and one has to unite with the divine. There is no doubt about it. There is the highest. But after that, to merge and vanish, the mother uses the word, is a misguided mysticism where there is a veil of illusion that comes. Because it is so wonderful. No, I don't want to go anywhere. But just imagine, if I were to know that the one whom I love is down in the gutters doing some work there or fighting on the battlefront also a battle, will I say, no, no, I want to be in your nice cozy home because I love you, I would say because I love you, therefore I will be on the battlefield, therefore I will enter into the gutter and maybe be in your company while cleaning work is going on. So this is the new aspiration that this body, that's described in Book 1, Canto 5, that he has planted a new aspiration. The ideal he had seen must be his home. This body itself must be worthy of the inhabitant. This is something very beautiful that Mother and Shurabindu have planted. They have brought this branch of heaven, now it has gone to the super heaven and brought this aspiration and planted. That's why we see suddenly in the earth, all the status quo have changed. People are wanting more and more that this must become something beautiful and that's why religious aspiration had to take a back seat, a background because it was turning too much away from the world. So when we look at life that way it begins to make sense. Religion had become otherworldly. Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Bhaj Govindam, Mood Mati, all due respect to Shankaracharya. <laughs> punarapi Janamam, Punarapi Maranam, Punarapi Janani, Jatare Shainam. So the great uh, Shankaracharya is saying that uh, Think of Govinda. Govinda is the guardian of light, Krishna. So, think of Govinda. Um, don't be a fool. Oh fool! Foolish mind, mode mate. 
Turn to Govinda. Otherwise, what is this life? Born and dying and born and dying. Again and again, you are sleeping in that womb of darkness. What is the point of all this? And then he says, this world is nothing but a veil of sorrows and pain and suffering. Turn away from this world. Sri says, precisely because if it is a field of death and suffering, all the more reason that children of immortality and bliss must plunge themselves into it and to make this into a garden of the wonderful, a home of the blissful. And this life which is apparently accursed and fallen, a life divine. So this the new aspiration is planted. I, I could go on, but uh, I, <laughs> respecting time, I'll just read a prayer of the mother, which is so beautiful, which, you know, her prayers and meditation are full of this aspiration. But this aspiration is for the earth. And um, uh, as I was thinking, which one to pick out, it's so difficult to choose. You know, because uh, how do you choose when each diamond is the rarest of rare, priceless. So, anyways, this is one of them. October 25th, 1914. My aspiration to the Aspiration may take the form of words, it may not take the form of words. That's the difference. So, prayer will be word, but aspiration is a state inside. And this aspiration can ignite the mind, the vital, the body everywhere. And so we see, my aspiration to thee, O Lord, has taken the form of a beautiful rose. Harmonious, full in bloom, rich in fragrance. So this aspiration is now not clouded with all those, as Sri says, it should not be mixed with ambitions, turning to spiritual life so that I can become a, another great yogi ji or a guru or whatever it is. So, uh, if we go in that line, then <laughs> guru becomes guru gantal, as they say. Uh, that's not what, you know, it is to annul thyself, that thou mayest be nothing, let only God be. So, my aspiration to thee, O Lord, has taken the form of a beautiful rose, harmonious, full in bloom, rich in fragrance, full in bloom. Everything in me has developed to whatever extent it could and now it is offering yourself, itself at your feet. So we don't offer a wil wilted flower at the feet of the divine. We don't even give it to a, you know, friend. So obviously when, when everything is blossoming, blooming, in the fullness of life, prime of youth, one is giving it. I stretch it out to thee. Just imagine this gesture. Everywhere we see people giving flowers, kneeling down. Everything has been corrupted now. <laughs> so, okay. Nothing wrong with it, okay. <laughs> Very soon you will realize that the flower should have gone to God. <laughs> this vaya is doesn't work. <laughs> But anyways, <laughs> rich in fragrance. I stretch it out to thee with both arms in a gesture of offering. And I ask of thee. So see, mother speaks of aspiration in the mind. Its seat is in the soul, but in the mind, in the vital, in the heart, in the body. Everything it should be. So much so that our each cell must become a fire. That's what it, ultimately this whole thing should become a Yajna Vedi, a Havan Kund. If, now this is the aspiration, if my understanding is limited, widen it. Aspiration for true knowledge is aspiration in the mind. For the soul it is union with the divine. It knows everything else comes from that. But when a mental aspiration means aspiration for knowledge, true knowledge, not book knowledge, not uh, intellectual knowledge. Intellectual knowledge has its place, but a very, very subordinate place. True knowledge is that which comes by contact with the divine. That's why we see when Vidya Sagar went to Sri Ramakrishna, his name was Vidya Sagar, ocean of knowledge, and he bowed down to him. Sri Ramakrishna says, Oh, the ocean of knowledge has come to this fellow. <laughs> Jokingly. And he says, Well, you have become the ocean, becoming one with the real ocean. So my oceanic knowledge has nothing compared, you know, in front of you. So, in the mind, knowledge. 
and for that widen it if my knowledge is obscure enlighten it so this means humility this means surrender this means the awareness whatever i may know is nothing before the divine avigyatam vijanata avigyatam avijanata of the isha upanishad if i think i know it i know it not and if i do not have the thought of it i know it so then what about the heart what form does the aspiration takes if my heart is empty of ardor set it a flame love for the divine empty of ardor so bhakti has nothing to do with all this bhajan kirtan kartal and uh, all the drama tamasha dancing around it is amusing it's okay <laughs> Perhaps better than going into a party and dancing. Better you dance the garba dance or whatever dance or every dance kind of dance. <laughs> But <laughs> what was the dance that Radha danced? What was the music that Krishna uh, played in front of Radha? Then broke his flute, never to play it again. The last music of Krishna. That is called love. love for the divine that now i have given myself to you that's the end of the story order not like i have given myself to you but you know what i have to give here also i have to give there also <laughs> you have one heart you can love only one have universal love for all there will be special bond psychic bonds which will also be there it's inevitable in the course of earthly life we all will have our unique psychic bonds vast universal love for all psychic bonds will be unique to each one but for everything else all our source of love all our expectation all our confidant everything it is the divine that is the love that should be there in the heart so she says set it a flame if my love is insignificant make it intense the intensest love is seeks union and eternity of union and the intensity of union that's why even in human love it seeks intensity and eternity together it can get intensity but not eternity but with divine love it gets both intensity and eternity why because divine is infinite so it never fades there are every time new ways that the divine is revealing himself that's why the secret of a lasting union is that always there are new things happening new uh revelations that are going on that's why constant progress to put it in the way constant progress make it intense if my feelings are ignorant and egoistic give them the full consciousness in the truth so this how she aspires and aspiration in the life is vital is to serve the divine to have no other aim except serving the divine of course in the beginning it will be ignorant service doesn't matter aspiration in the body that it wants contact of the divine in some way or the other and that's why mothers and shurvin those things touched by them people don't realize i mean this is no won't be available tomorrow for any amount of money why they left because they knew aspiration of the body wanting contact with the divine of course it may start externally and this grows inwardly every cell wanting the divine is the supramental yoga of transformation leave aside all the intellectual things which have woven around it each cell must want and this aspiration has been there in earlier time to time but it has not been able to be sustained when meera had this aspiration she merged vanished when uh, swami ramalingam whose story some of us may know in the southern india who spoke about gray slide eventually his body vanished because it is difficult to sustain that flame in the body and yet shubhendra the mother say that this body can be transformed in such a way that it can hold this divine power within and then she says and the i which demands this of the o lord is not a little personality lost amidst thousands of others it is the whole earth that aspires to the in a movement full of fervor she has done this yoga for the earth and at one place in one of the prayers she says 
each creature who aspires even the dumb aspiration of plant and animals they to aspiration is universal it's there because of aspiration creation has moved up only thing is we become conscious of it as human being we have this privilege and we can give it nice words so this aspiration which is there she says even the dumb aspiration mute aspiration of animals and plants joins with my formidable aspiration and it becomes great and mighty so how to increase the aspiration sit near her sit at her feet come in contact with her in whatever way look at her picture in whatever way think about her with the heart give the love to her it doesn't mean not loving others but seeing the divine in others and loving them which is a much better wider vaster way of loving so this way when we join her then aspiration grows in the perfect silence of my contemplation all widens to infinity and in the perfect peace of that silence thou appearest in the resplendent glory of thy light so how do we keep the aspiration always burning it comes and goes right and then we get lost in the day to day stuff yes it's just sudden spurt and then you see that it's yes. not there yes please it so how to keep this aspiration burning so that's why the mother speaks of uh, the triple aspiration and this we see when in the upanishad the three layers the three fires of nachiketa but to make it very practical so the seat of aspiration is the soul this is where it is lit initially and some part of her being catches it maybe the mind or the heart depending on or the life force whatever is ready catches it but the rest of the layers don't catch it so when they don't they resist very often they not only don't catch it they resist that's why the mother says uh, the mind vital and the body are coats of falsehood but this must be transformed so that's the other part not traditional yoga where it ran away so until these parts also are lit up because otherwise ancient yogis to nature it would just withdraw from the world why because the moment you get involved with the world it will get uh, clouded and covered the moment mind becomes active for instance that you know if one has a beautiful aspiration one goes and there is a big news something has come up and or nothing else even uh, food or whatever the mind the senses they are withdrawn drawn toward that not withdrawn but drawn as they naturally are then the aspiration dims so it's important to that this aspiration lights up in all these parts so as i said for the mind knowledge as the mother said the mind should seek knowledge wisdom higher knowledge as the nishad puts it there is a higher knowledge and a lower knowledge lower knowledge comes by books and the higher knowledge i mean broadly speaking including vedas i mean uh, it says that uh, it's still part of the lower knowledge referring to the book knowledge book part of it the three but there is a higher knowledge which comes when the veil is torn and infinity of you know opens its doors then there is no limit so this higher knowledge uh, should come this aspiration of the mind to know not know to uh, you know write books <laughs> but but no for the joy why because without that knowledge we are so ignorant incomplete so that knowledge in every dimension direction of life so this is the uh, when we when the mind begins to aspire then then the obstacle of the mind which throws doubts and you know all kind that begins to vanish then the heart must aspire if the heart strings are attached to all kinds of uh, uh, people and uh, you know things then um, this this will not uh, it will only suffer and much of this suffering is only to you know ignite that flame but it's it's not the best way uh, because the vedic rishis say that either you do yoga and ignite the flame or through um, suffering it gets ignited so yoga better otherwise roga and bhoga and roga so that's not the way <laughs> that the flame should be lit so again here comes the problem that what do we do with people who are in their life see them as representatives of the divine it's beautiful it will the permanent remedy to all quarrels at least from one side okay <laughs> so <laughs> and it's so beautiful because uh, you don't suffer because even if somebody literally hates you or you know is angry at you you are still able to see something of that um, 
you know, divine operating inside. Sometimes even a truth, maybe the divine is telling me something. He doesn't understand. He is fuming out of anger. It doesn't matter. So when we begin to love the divine in all, not all as the divine, not like that, but divine is in all beings. So it begins to change our, uh, the, the heart opens wide. As she says, she is aspiring for the whole earth. So um, when the heart loves the divine, but as I said, not the bhakti of the old kind where you go to a temple or a church and you love only live in a monastery. No, but the heart that loves all creatures as, as belonging to the divine. Vast universal love. Then the heart stops wailing. Attachments don't come in the way. Because there are no more attachment, they are love. Other person may not understand. In fact, the other person may initially when you are entering into this state may feel you are growing distant. But later on we'll say, oh, what a sweet, beautiful love. One wouldn't know that, you know, what the change that is taking place inside. And then the same with the life which is obscuring us in by making us rush into desires. So instead of those, now again we'll work. But instead of working to satisfy and fulfill our desire, we should work as a service to the divine, wherever we are. Yesterday we were saying, so whatever situation we find ourselves in. Sometimes we may be in a situation where we can't even, uh, we can't just leave the job for various reasons, corporate or otherwise. Like, you know, I've been in the military and uh, many things are beautiful, but many things you don't like, but you're there. Uh, I'm not in the ashram, but still, I can always do that. Whoever patient comes to my uh, Rome has come, you know, divine has sent him. And he is the divine who has come to me, like that. So it's a question of practicing that this is my service to the divine. How others see it, whether people understand it or not understand it, that's irrelevant. So it becomes a nishkam karma, uh, where all work is done as an offering. So when we do that, life also stops, uh, it begins to collaborate. It doesn't block the aspiration. So then we may be moving through scenes, circumstances, working, uh, be on the phone, whatever we are doing, but deep inside, the connection, the aspiration will continue because it's a state in which we enter. And then the body itself, you see, body is uh, unfortunately the tool of all kinds of forces, greed and lust and fear and all things. So we have to also slowly, by these more enlightened parts, remind it that look here, you are also creation of the divine. And open to the divine, open the body to the divine. When one is ill, to open, to offer the body to the divine. Or when one is uh, not ill, then to seek health and lead a you know, beautiful, balanced life so that the body can serve the divine. So this way, slowly, all these courts begin to be lit up by the same fire. And then there is no obstacle. Otherwise, one is always swinging between outer life and inner life, material life and spiritual life and start seeking solitude, which is okay at a, in the beginning it may be necessary. But, um, and surround yourself with, with the divine uh, because, you know, in whatever way, I mean picture, book, I used to keep the live divine and Savitri on my table and uh, whenever people would come, I would say, well, uh, they would start, I would say, all, all the answers are here. Um, in my room, I put mother's picture all around. Now, some people may say, someone asked me, uh, this just as an aside, sir, why are you putting these pictures? Typical, you know, left lip, liberal, I don't know what it is called here. Uh, so I said, you have a problem with that. So <laughs> he said, no. I said, you can put a film star's photograph. What's my problem, if your problem if I put the Divine Mother's photograph? Because she represents to me the Divine. So I couldn't care less what you think about it. There are people I know who don't put it because, oh, people will have this idea that I am being religious. Well, I am not living to satisfy and please you. I am living to satisfy and please my master and I want to be his master's voice. So when we start living, it requires courage. It requires, you know, to break free from all these ideas that if I put... I have met people, you'll be surprised, who don't put the picture because when they come, they'll think we are very religious and we are supposed to be secular. I said, what has this got to do with religion? I am not religious at all. I mean, now, <laughs> for a long time. I love them, so I can't put somebody whom I love, I put your girlfriend's picture in a purse. It's very nice. Oh, what a lovely love. And if <laughs> whatever you may do otherwise, keeping her in the pocket and forgetting about her, that's a different story. But if I keep the Divine Mother's picture with me, oh, you are being religious, Jesus. I don't understand this, but, uh, well, surround yourself. 
with the divine with the music everything so that these forces that come to obstruct they don't come near they will try but when they see that atmosphere environment and of course what one finds most challenging is when there is a human being who does not collaborate that's very difficult because then you know you you have to probably i don't know pray to the divine whether you will be together or not together i mean not you i am saying in general it's very difficult but otherwise continue with your aspiration doesn't matter somebody collaborates cooperates understand doesn't understand one has to get past all these social nuances mother says if you are still worried about social opinions you are not ready even to step the foot onto the path some may think you are crazy i am lucky being a psychiatrist people won't say openly <laughs> i have the label to treat the crazy okay so flood and fill yourself with the divine in whatever way if nothing else keeping the book just holding the book i think vladimir's beautiful experience i loved it and i have seen just keeping shrivindo's works in your house it does something reading does many more things <laughs> Okay, surround yourself with the divine. Thank you so much. Yes.